on. No. Okay, hello, I'm Paul, and I'm here to introduce you RBAC, like Earl Based Access Control, and I will touch even how to do it in RPM. Uh, so I would start with that PALP is like the multi-user sy uh, system, but without something like Airbag, it's not uh, it's not secure enough. And that for more security reason, even the human errors, that somebody can use the wrong link and remove your repository. So that's why we are uh, starting to work on this one, on RBAC. So <clears throat> what is RBAC? I think it's pretty clear from the role based access control, the name. There will be users and their roles, and they will be able to do based on their roles. So, yeah. So let's define a few terms about the airbag. And there are basic two, which we'll, we, I will be using to present as its permission and the roles. Permission, it's like the atomic block for the roles. And that's like this permission, it's one thing that allow user or the group to perform one action. And I would like to note it here from the start that uh, I know uh, the permissions are like hard coded. So only the plugin users or the developers can uh, play with them or make, uh, create new ones or so. And the second term is the role. And it's basically the set of permission. And maybe good here, uh, it's mentioned to. Here it's good to mention that roles are uh, can be obtained to the uh, like user or the group can obtain the permission or more permission there or the roles only via the URL assignment so via API or from CI. So it's good to know that how to do that. So uh, within the whole pulp, I think all plugins uh, who use the RBAC within the pulp. Uh, we follow the basic pattern and we got some predefined roles. I will talk about the predefined, why it's predefined or if there is other types of it later. So there are just three roles and it's usually owner, view, viewer and creator. I think it's pretty clear what they are does, but owner is the person who can manage with the model or with an endpoint, he just own it so he can do almost everything with it. Viewer can just view it and creator is the one who can create new one. So um, there is, I will continue on the roles. So there is two like, let's say scopes of the role and there is model and object level. Uh, Model level, it's the scope of the role or the, the permissions that user who, who got this model level role can access all, all the models or all, every content on the endpoint. Uh, and the, like everything is in the pulp and he got for, for this part, he can do C or do everything object level. So there is an, that's the another one, and that means that you can uh, like limit the user to see only one or two, for example, repositories like the endpoint. That if you don't need uh, administrate everything, and you need just two uh, like two parts pieces of the content, it's for it that you can't see everything. So you, uh, the slide said yeah. that it was role levels. Or are these role levels or are these permission levels? I think it's role levels because you specify. That's a good question. <laughs> you got me. Uh, but I believe it's still it's role levels because you specify some role that, for example, you can be view, you will have the role to view. But you can uh, scope it just for the objects. So it's for Matthias. Yeah, um, I'm sorry if the language is a little bit confusing here. But in the end, the role is really just a bunch of permissions. And this is kind of the level of role assignments. So 
when you assign a role to a user, you can either assign it globally or for specific instances. And this is the distinction made here. OK, cool. So we are talking about roles. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Yes, I... but, but the, when you say a user has a role, it's actually the user has the role assignment. Yeah, yeah. Because it has to be assigned to him. The role exists without being assigned to any user. Yep. OK, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I just want to mention here that there is, uh, with that instance uh, or object level of the role assignment, there is some uh, not really limitation, more the exception, because, for example, some uh, permissions under the role doesn't make sense to be just for the object, for example, to create, that we cannot say you, you are able to create only this one object. So sometimes it doesn't apply like how you think, but it's the, the very good example is that add permission later that you can uh, create something and you don't know what yet. So it doesn't apply here and it's not checked. So uh, I already mentioned there is like uh, predefined. So uh you can imagine that predefined it's it's the same like the locked because there are two like let's say flavors of the rules and it's locked and the user locked are the predefined as i already mentioned before so user cannot do anything about this role he can assign it but that's all he cannot change it remove it or disable it it's it will be there and as already mentioned, it's the same as the permissions. Only like developers or the plugin writers can uh, create or manage these roles, and it's on the code level, so it's not so easy. And then there is the user roles, and that's as the name say says, user can create like whole manageable by the users or the groups, more the users. So that's that's pretty it there is just one example how you can see some predefined or the locked roles here i'm uh, showing just the rpm remote viewer and it's a role that you cannot do anything with it it's there you can use it in your user roles but you cannot change it so now a little uh, mix with RPM plugin. Here is the list, like the endpoints. So you can imagine it like the API endpoints, uh, which are supported. Uh, maybe you note you don't see uh, all endpoints we got, but I will get there. And just to note more, uh, more there is one endpoint which is copy, which is not content endpoint. So you can even manage like roles or the permissions for the custom actions or even or any cu cu custom stuff that can appear so uh yeah there, there was i mentioned some predefined or locked roles already and it was for specific endpoint for like the remote or the repository this is there rpm got two more locked roles and it's just the base for the start, just like the bootstrap for the users using it. And it's RPM admin and RPM viewer. Uh, as the main uh, name says, RPM admin can do everything in RPM plugin. He got like all permissions which are uh, around the plugin. He got it. RPM viewer, it's just for the view, but it's not locked to one endpoint, but he can see everything from content. For, uh, through repository to the distribution, everything is there. This is like two basic roles we put there because it could be good like start for users that one can review at least and I mean, can do everything and it's a starting point to look at there on the roles. And in, <clears throat> in what yeah. in what version of pulp RPM are these added? Are, is this in already next, released? Is this no, no, no. In there? it's not yet released. It will be probably in next uh, version of RPM. Okay. 
So in the end, there is a uh, link to the docs. In the last slide, I will show you, and that one leads still to the GitHub. Cool. But um, documentation is there. So if you are using master branch documentation, it's in place. So that's fine. Cool. Um, then my other question is, <clears throat> um, so these roles will be provided with the next release. Um, what? will happen to an upgrade will um for example right now i guess most installations only have the admin user so there uh we will not have to have any migrations for users is that correct yeah okay not really right. for the users it's not directly connected to not connected but it's not uh, under the users so users will be the, still the same. This is the role. This is not the user. Yeah, yeah. This, this, this is going to be a separate table where yeah, the roles exactly. are assigned to a user. Yes, yes, and, yes. OK. So right. on update, when user have it, it will be still there. Maybe it will be updated, but it won't touch the users. It will be updated to this table. So for example, there will be new remote type. So these like. Uh, permissions table will be updated, but users are uh, or groups are fine. Yeah, yeah. And then with the new version of the RPM plugin, we will be able to uh, add new users and start assigning them these locked roles, the ones that are already yes. provided. Yep. Okay. Yes, they will be right. always there. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So continue. Yeah. Now, little, uh, I will go a little bit back to the theory. And there is kind of limitations in RBAC. And it's for the content and repository version. I already mentioned that maybe you know that there is no all endpoints which are supported by RBAC. And there is two special cases, which are the content. Uh, in case of RPM, it could be RPM package, could be even the metadata content and so on, but you know, and then the repository version. So I would like to mention here uh, the content because uh, let's say pulp architecture, it's like more repos repository based. So everything is around the repository. And even if you want to upload, for example, RPM package, you need some repository where to upload it. So you still will need to have access to the repository. So here content, it's pretty connected to the repository. And if you are able to see the repository, you are able to see the content. And there is checks like that. Also, very same situation, it's for the repository versions. Because repository versions, as the name saying, it's the versions of that repository. So you still need some access to the repository to manage the content and so on. So uh, it's not uh, possible to have only permission to one repository version because it's still tightly connected to the repository. So if you need to manage the repository version, you will be able to manage all the repository version around this repository. It's like the ch uh, ch ch children of the repository. So everything, once you got the repository version permission, you can do everything on the uh, repository as well. But I believe this is fine because the usage of pulp, it's narrowed like this. So you usually play with the repository and versions are just like bonus there. And there is one more term that I didn't mention before. It's creation rule. Because uh, as I uh, already said, there is like, for example, creator role. So creation hook, it's basically the function, what will happen or what roles or permissions you got when you create uh, some ob uh, object content, whatever. Uh, this is the basic, uh, the default are usually uh, you got the owner. Here I am showing the command, how you can change it. And for example, got just the viewer 
Uh, here it's the uh, like reviewer for everything. It's just the example, but you can change it. I believe it won't be so usual to do that, but it's possible here. Yeah, and of course, when you want to start to play with girls and making your own, you need to know what the permission is here, there, even that locked rows or predefined for the endpoints. So it's very easy to get this. This is very like shortened output because it's a huge one. So I'm showing here just uh, the create action. So as you uh, see in the command, you uh, choose the endpoint you want to see, and you will be see all the stuff. Like here, it's create. It will be continued by the retrieve, update, remove. And I pick this one because you can see there is more permissions. For example, for action to create, you don't need only one permission, but you need two. And you need to have some remote to create a repository. So you need to permission to view some remote, at least one. Even on that object level, there is one. So we can start work it. And then, for of course, there is that at RPM repository permission. And that's one of the that examples I mentioned before, that at one that's not checked on the object level, because that doesn't make sense in the end. OK, Grant, go on. So just to get that straight, can you, if you can back up, just I'm trying to yeah. get this straight in my head. What this is telling us is, if I want to be able to create a repository, I have to be allowed to, to create repository models. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm given that permission. And repositories have remotes. So either I need to be able to create remotes or I have access to a remote object. So I have both, I could have the model access to remotes, but I don't need that. Maybe there's just a remote that somebody you know gave me permissions to or I can view and that's enough. So that's what we're saying here, yeah? Yes, exactly. Outstanding, okay, thank you. That, I just needed to get it clear in my own head. That is fine. So here is example how to create rules. Uh, in previous slide, you see how you can check all the per, uh, permissions. So here it's simple command using pulp CLI because I think it's the best one. So you see, you give just the name of your new role and add the permission needed. Uh, as I said in previous, you can go through the all permissions you need. So here I create the role to user can uh, be able to publish something. So again, it's not only one permission, but I need to view some repository, not all models, but at least one object I want to publish. So if I can see it, I can use it. And then because pulp architecture, there is some shortcuts, but usually workflow, it's create publication and from publication distribution. So you need both of these permissions. So you need to combine all needed permissions, then create the own. And second command, you can see it's very <clears throat> easy one. It's just you choose the user who need this role, assign this role. And here I want to highlight there is the object argument. And this, the, this is the one who like differentiate between the model and object permission. Because when you use the empty one, you're giving the, this user the model level permission or URL assignment. So he will be able to publish all repository he can see or what can be there. If you want to limit his, uh, limit his like access, or something so you can specify the object and it's the endpoints of the pulp you know pulp api v3 for example uh, repository object this and this you put it there and it will be this row assignment will be limited just to that object and here uh makes sense only use the repository links like endpoints because all orders are at and that's not uh, checked on the object level as i mentioned i think so now. okay so pulp, 
so Pavel, if I were an admin of a pulp instance, and I get to create repositories and I create repos for RHEL and for SUSE, for example, and then I want to give you the rights to do all the RHEL publishing, I'm going to handle syncing the repos and then our, my, our company workflow means I'm done. Now it's your job. I would then use this kind of role assignment and the object would be a list of all the RHEL repositories. You're the, you're the one that can publish yeah. them, but you can't do anything to the SUSE repositories. Yes, exactly. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, that's why there is that object level uh, right. assignment because right. sometimes you don't want to show orders. Your yep. personal reports, maybe you got just some internal, so you got public users. So let's play with this stuff, but not with mine. Right, and I can't do anything to those repos other than publish them because I only have view access to them. Yes, Perfect. yes. Thank you. Yeah. And when you play with this role assignment, there is sometimes can happen you do something wrong or you know specify some permission which doesn't exist or something. So there is very easy way to go back and command like this uh, get, uh, get you back to the defaults. There is some defaults, as I said, of creation hooks, the owner. Uh, so, for example, when you change all these stuff and give the wrong creation hooks, even though some other permissions mix this simple command, this endpoint is somehow broken, let's go back to default and start over. It's possible, simple command, and that's it. And I would say it's pretty it, like the presentation of the RBAC. I think I'm even pretty on time. So if you have some more questions, shoot. Hey, Bob, okay. you know if anybody is yeah. um, currently using the RBAC, do you have any users that are... Yeah. Well, not in RPM because as we already mentioned, it's not released. So now it's like the tech preview more so but i'm not really aware if how many customers or people start to play with them yeah so we have we have our back in pop file and pop core but yeah. it's kind of not enough to get broad usage i don't think yeah i believe when it will get released there will start the user counting because I think there could be more. As already uh, Grant mentioned, that's a good example because there is many, many uh, kinds of RPM repositories, Oracle, SUSE, Fedora, Red Hat. So I believe it will be good to divide and limit access to just part user needs. I mean, one of the first things that that and this is not a where we are now this is a maybe next year kind of thing when i went i went down that path and my brain immediately went you know it'd be really cool if we could group objects into categories like say oh this is this is a fedora repo and i want to give somebody access to anything that falls into that category or that is tagged a certain way that might be a, a you know a, a next phase of enhancement to our back but that's not until after we have more basic implementation yeah but i i think it's good to start from the basics so it's there yeah yeah absolutely so, I mean, one thing we have heard people ask for from pulp and from our products as well is yeah but i want to give somebody a login and all they can do is look at stuff and the view role by itself gives us a lot of what uh we, we've had people ask for yeah well now it's with these basics it's possible but it's more hard for the admin Later, we can ease the work for the admins, but it's possible already now. So I believe it's good. One step at a time, absolutely. Yeah. OK, still, if you've got any more questions, shoot. I just uh, changed the slide because here there is already published docs for the pulp core. So you can go there and read about it. It will be very helpful for the plugin writers, mainly. Uh, here is the link for the RPM docs, which is there, but it's in the GitHub, but still there. 
And or if you've got more questions or anything more, contact us via our channels, mailing list, better on metrics. Of course. Pulp. Discourse. Discourse. Yes. Also, also, we're not on free note anymore. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I go there once a week when I remember it. So yeah, definitely. I would just. I, I, would just yeah. list, uh, I suggest in Matrix on that one. Yeah, I su suggest you all use the Matrix or the Discourse. Everything you can find out on PulpProject.org. So every every I link I forget to put there is on the site. It will be there. Very cool. Very cool. Any other questions for Pavel, folks? Yeah. Well, I counted five Mississippi's, so I believe that's it. You All can right. contact me later or uh... Daniel, if you'll end our recording.